الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله وعلى آله وصحبه ومن والاه وسلم سليما كثيرا One of the greatest obligations which Allah has obligated upon us after worshiping Him alone without associating anything as a partner with Him likewise fulfilling the right of the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is to be kind to our parents to be kind to our parents Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala mentioned وَعْبُدُوا اللَّهَ وَلَا تُشْرِكُوا بِهِ شَيْئًا وَبِالْوَالِدَيْنِ إِحْسَانًا The meaning of the verse Allah said Worship Allah and do not associate anything as a partner with Him and be kindful and be good to your parents بَلْ أَوْسَ جَلَّ وَعَلَى بِالْإِحْسَانِ إِلَيْهِمَا Rather Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala has commanded us in His noble book to be good to our parents to have a good relationship with them even if they are disbelievers even if they are disbelievers rather even if they command you to, to associate partners with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala you should still be good to them and respectful to them yes you do not hear them and obey them in disobeying Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala but that should not be a justification for you to disrespect them the meaning of the verse Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned we have advised the insan, the human being, the walidayhi, to be good to his parents. Concerning his mother, she carried him weakness upon weakness. And likewise, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned, وَإِنْ جَاهَدَاكَ even, even they strive hard and harder, hard and harder, to make you fall into disbelief. You should not listen to them, but yet be good to them. Subhanallah. Ibn Taymiyyah, may Allah have mercy upon him, mentioned this a side point but it's very important he said if the asal to, to, to fight the non-believers because they are disbelievers only that's the only reason for us to fight against them then Allah would have commanded the believer to fight against his own parents who they strive to make him fall into disbelief but this is a clear proof you do not fight the verses dealing with fighting disbelievers in the Quran and the Sunnah not because they're just disbelievers Rather, if they wage a war against the Muslims or they prevent the Muslims to establish their religion. That's the wisdom behind it. Barakallahu alaikum. Not the Khawarij go to the train, kill innocent people, non Muslims, and he said it's from jihad. Yes, he's right. He said jihad in the path of a shaitan, not in the path of a Rahman. Barakallahu alaikum. So the shahid here, even if they are disbelievers, what about if they are believers? And what we hear from the stories, young brothers, young sisters, even old brothers disrespecting their parents, disrespecting their mothers, disrespecting their fathers. Will Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala command us to be good to them, to be nice to them, to be to, to look after them, to treat them with respect. So we have to strive to jihad against our own selves in dealing with our parents. Yes, sometimes our parents they're going to tell us something which doesn't not go in line with our desires or what we want but we have to be good to them. Yes, if they tell you to disobey Allah, you do not hear them and obey them. But as we have mentioned, based upon the Quranic verses, like was a hadith, that should not be justification for you to disrespect your mother or your father. Please don't think you're a real, you are a real man when you disrespect your parents. You're just a coward. And Allah will bring someone to humiliate you. It's Allah, salam wa afiyah. And this, this is what the ulama mentioned. There is certain part, uh, the disobedience, Allah will not punish the people here in this world. He will punish them in the year after or forgive them, except disrespecting the parents. Allah will punish you in this dunya if you do not make tawbah. Allah will humil humiliate you in this dunya. Some people, if their parents ask them for money, they start complaining. A man came to Nabi والسلام, and he said, Oh, Messenger of Allah, my father. Keep taking my money. He said, you and your money belongs to your father. Yes, the father should not uh, uh, oppress his son or oppress his uh, daughter. Barakallahu alaykum. So, likewise, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala told us, or oh, there's a narration, a man came to Nabi alayhi salatu wa salam. He said, oh, messenger of Allah, I want to do jihad, fighting with the soul, or physical fight, physical jihad. He said, Is, are your parents alive? He said, yes. He said, go and do jihad. 
with them. Meaning to strive in pleasing your parents. Subhanallah, and what we have in the stories, young children going to Syria, claiming they want to fight for ISIS. And as the Shahad al-Bukhari, may Allah preserve him, when he said to me, he says, no, these people are, uh, was made by the, by the, the, the enemies of Islam. Barakallah alaykum. They're not fighting for, for the sake of Allah. Just to get a side point, before ISIS came about, all the social media, I mean, all the outlet, outlets, media or media outlets, were focusing on the crimes of Bashar. All of them. They were focusing, exposing him. The, so then out of nowhere, ISIS came about. Then all the outlets, or media outlets, diverted the stuff focus on ISIS. While Bashar was committing crimes. Utilize your brain, Barakallah, and Alhamdulillah, I was supposed to expose them. And by the way, let me make something clear. That's better. We have to be just. We don't believe every person joined ISIS is an evil man. Some of them were deluded. They were misguided. They went with a good intention. Barakallah alaikum. So we have to be just. But generally speaking, eyes are the followers of a shaitan, not the followers of Sunnah Nabi al Rahman. Barakallah alaikum. So a man came to Nabi Alayhi wa sallam. He said, Can I go and fight? He said, Your parents are alive? He said, Yes. He said, be, uh, uh, Fight uh, for the cause, uh, uh, for the sake of Allah, with the meaning that be nice to them, be respectful to them, be good to them. Another narration, a man came to Nabi Alayhi wa Wassalam, and ask him, say, I want to seek your advice. I want to go and fight. He said, is your mother alive? He said, yes. He said, go, there is a Jannah. There's another narration that the Jannah is under the feet of the mothers. This hadith is da'if, is weak. However, the meaning is correct. Ta'ir, the meaning is correct. One of the Salaf, Muhammad al-Nusirin, when his mother passed away, he was started crying and just crying. So one of the students said, why are you crying too much? He said, one of the gates of Jannah has been closed today. One of the gates of Jannah has been closed today. Look at the effect of the Salaf. So my dear brothers, if your mother is alive, or your father is alive, then be good to them. Take care of them. Look after them. Treat them with respect. Listen to them. Spend some time with them, because you regret. I lost my father when he was 16. And now I wish I spent some time with him. So you regret it. And us will never appreciate Allah blessings, until Allah takes it away from us. So, and one of the ways that what we see in our time, by you going doing haram, joining gangs and, and, and selling drugs, you're causing your mother harm. You're causing your father harm. When you start doing haram, you should take care of them, stick with them. And as I mentioned, don't think you're a real man because you disrespect your parents. You're not a real man, you're a coward. May Allah guide us and guide you. So to be a real man, the real man, the one who takes care of his parents. The real man, the one who treats his parents with respect. The real man, the one who deals with his parents with love and mercy and respect. Barakallah alaykum. And uh, fulfilling the rights of the parents, there's a lot of virtues in doing so. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will bless you. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will uh, bless your life when you take care of your parents. So we have to, and there's many narrations, many verses, many, many stories from the Salaf, how they dealt with their parents. So inshallah we suffice with this, and we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make us from those who respect their parents, who show love and mercy to their parents, who take care, take care of their parents. Let's Allah Jalla wa ala to help our brothers and sisters in Palestine, especially in Gaza and Rafah, to give them victory over their enemies, because what they're going through, no doubt is hardship and no doubt is oppression against them but it's an evil terrorist criminals so make dua for them don't forget your brothers and sisters in Gaza in Palestine make dua for them to Allah give them a victory over their enemies Subhana rabbika rabbil izzati amma yasifun wa salamun ala al-mursaleen wa alhamdulillah rabbil alameen just to remind myself I was thinking to khutbah about it but maybe another time my brothers it's very hot outside and a lot of Women are walking and dressed, but half naked with Iyadu Billah. So we have to fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala by lowering our gazes. Tayyib, lower your gaze. The first time, yes, if you just look at her without intention, then Allah is going to hold you accountable. But look down. Naam, try your best to turn away from the haram, and Allah will give you the blessings of the sweetness of Iman. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to protect us and protect our 
families and our loved ones. وصلى الله نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين وسلم سليما كثيرا.